So in my most recent video, I talked about uh, System 76's new Cosmic Desktop, and lots of people seem to be quite interested in me taking a look at that. Uh, so let's do it. Uh, I have the Cosmic Desktop loaded up here on uh, a virtual machine, and uh, there are still some bugs. This is still alpha stuff, but uh, I want to take a look at it with you guys and see what we think. So this is actually not just Cosmic. This is uh, Pop OS 2404. I believe. I'm not sure exactly which version of uh, Pop OS this is. 2404, I would imagine. 2404, that is correct. Okay, so uh, here we have the desktop and there's a bunch of stuff that we should take a look at. Uh, the first thing that I wanna look at is actually uh, tiling. Now you can drag and drop um, to, to these touch points or these drop points. I'm not sure what you wanna call them. And so let's just drag this over here and boom. And you might be saying like, hey, that's not much different than like the uh, GNOME workspace. And that's true, but I feel like this works a little bit better. Uh, and there are key combos you can use as well. So you can switch between your active windows using the, uh, the super key and left or right, which I'm doing here. Um, and if we have another one, uh oh, <laughs> alpha software, folks. This is alpha, alpha software. So it's showing off tiling, which is pretty nice. And I was told that tiling can actually be set on like a per automatically tile the current workspace. That's cool. And you can set the new workspace behavior to default to floating or tiled. And we can automatically tile the current workspace. That's pretty neat. Let's open up a terminal and there you go. Boom. How about um, opening up yeah, look at that. Now, can we control shift? Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm sorry, super shift. That's cool. I'm not sure about these defaults here, but I mean, that's pretty neat. Um, and you can also, if I remember correctly, you can stack so you have multiple um, tabs for each type of window. I'm curious if you can stack them on top of, yeah, look at that. Oh, wow, it just reduced them all down. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. As far as I understand it, this is a completely new desktop environment written in Rust. Now, one of the benefits of having this written in Rust is that it actually doesn't require uh, any or very few like build dependencies. And so uh, this alpha is being packaged for many different distributions right now, which is pretty neat to see. Now, another thing uh, about the way this works is uh, you can come up here and there's audio output as well as audio input. You know, these are, these are typical, right, for uh, what we want to see with a desktop environment having you know the ability to log out and restart and, and what have you however if we actually go into the settings so if we go to in cosmic settings you can see that there's actually uh no sound in here at all like the sound options are all up here in the uh in the panel or applet i believe they call it so you know we have input devices displays system accounts time and language and power and that's it in here and desktop of course um, but there's no audio networking you don't see it in here um what else have we got do not disturb notifications there's no notification settings um i think it's debatable whether or not uh you need the kind of duplication of uh ways to adjust settings you know these kind of quick settings i think are more important to have than having like the same exact like method of you know two different ways of modifying the same setting um so i kind of like this uh another cool thing is you can actually um mess around with the appearance of uh your desktop so you can pick the light setting or the dark setting uh, it doesn't seem to be updating this panel background you can also choose an accent color you can see we just switch from like a almost green blue to a blue blue, pink, red, reddish, orange, yellow, 
green, brown. I kind of like the neutrality of the brown, honestly. You can also pick like round, like slightly round. You might call it like a capsule, I don't know, or square. Um, and you can see like it's changing these rounded edges here. So we have extremely rounded edges, which I don't see much of a difference here. I, I think I prefer slightly round. I think the round is a little too, like especially here, it just kind of violates the white space principle that there's laid out. So if you do slightly round, I think that works a little bit better. And it also adjusts like the highlight, the, the focus um, background there, which is pretty nice. You know, there's like consistency and it's well thought out. I think I like the, the, the square, honestly. Um, woof. Wow. You can actually get pretty fine grain in here. We can set our text color. And in my news video, I said that this kind of reminded me of like Windows 95 and in and, and, and that's not a bad thing. Um, it's just it gives you a lot of power to be able to kind of just ruin how it looks <laughs> like. Uh, and that's why a lot of like UI designers shy away from having um, customizability like this on this kind of level. Uh, it's why a lot of UI designers stick with like a single accent color and then derive other colors from that accent. Um, I know as a web designer, that's kind of how I try to do things because if you try to make a, a website customizable to any degree, it quickly becomes A, unmanageable and B, illegible. And when you're trying to get a user interface uh, to work multiple ways, uh, you know, in, in all kinds of scenarios, and you're also integrating something like um, GTK and uh, QT, and you're doing your own UX widget stuff, like that's gonna be a tall order to, to add that kind of customizability. But, you know, it seems like a task that they are up for at System76, so, you know, good on you. Okay, so we have resolution, refresh rate, scale, orientation. We have users, which there aren't any users apparently, or maybe this just isn't like filled out yet. We have about, 12 gigs of RAM, firmware, there's no firmware, time and settings, power. So that's the settings menu. Uh, it's interesting. You know, like I said, this is still an alpha, so they're working on uh, getting this done and, and ready for, I don't know exactly when they were thinking of launching it, but I think before the end of the year. Now, I want to talk about something else here. So let's type in a question mark. We can search our files. We can uh, read our recent files. Okay, so let's let's just type in uh, slash home slash Gardner Bryant. Oh, cool. Uh, and then let's go pictures. Let's see if it just automatically. No. So pictures. And it should launch the pictures. No. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. So you can like switch to uh, you just hit the super key to bring up um, this like commandlet or or search function. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what they call this, but uh, let's type in question. Ah, so yeah, so there's like a bunch of stuff you can do. So you can do 19 divided by four. It's 4.75, right? So you get a calculator here, which is pretty cool. Um, now, what happens if you hit enter? Okay, so that's not really what I would expect uh, to happen when you hit enter when doing math. I don't know why I would expect hitting enter to copy it to my keyboard, the result, um, but it puts it in here and then you, I guess you can just select it and copy it. So let's see, what else can you do in here? Let's do question mark again. Web search. Oh, so you can say DDG, search for uh, some answer to a big question. And then it automatically launches Firefox. 
and it searches for some answer to a big question. Now, uh, let's see what else can we do? Question mark. So if we do run sudo apt install steam, and I ask for our password, and then we can install steam. Heck yeah. So that's pretty cool that you can run commands just from that uh, launcher. I think that's what they call it, is launcher. All right. So there's, there's Steam installed, so we could probably just say Steam, and it should boot up. Look at that. Excellent. Now, I'm in a virtual machine, so Steam's not going to work super great. Um, there's also the Cosmic Store here. And this isn't tiling, which is interesting. Oh, and we've crashed again. <laughs> again, this is alpha software. All right, let's open up the store. And uh, this is gonna be uh, a lot of flat pack and stuff like that, which is pretty nice. I love flat pack, I love flat hub. Um, so that's good to see. You've got stuff like uh, signal and what have you. I like the common interface stuff. Like this is gonna hide and this is gonna show the places or the, I'm not sure what you'd call this, like the, the uh, not bookmarks, but something like that. Um, let's see if there's like, uh, what a GNOME app looks like. So let's do disk, disks? That's a GNOME app. Okay. All right, so it looks like a GNOME app. I mean, it's like GTK, not bad. There's probably a lot more that they can do to make these look uh, a little more similar, but you know, they've got a long way to go before they start messing with you know gtk components of having like the the this highlight color be the highlight color of uh these interface elements would be you know ideal making sure that these have like the same kind of spacing because right now they're pretty comp compact here but i mean also like it's impressive how much i mean they, they say in their uh, press release for the alpha one iso here that this is like a fully like bespoke desktop environment. It's written in Rust. And so it's pretty impressive how far they've come in like two years working on this. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm actually quite a big fan of the, the workspace uh, automatic tiling stuff. Screenshot tool. Yes, I've been told that this is actually one of, a really nice tool as well. So let's... Um, screenshot doesn't seem to be doing anything screenshot so how do we move to another window oh there we go so we have we have like a file management workspace and then we have like a firefox web browsing workspace can i make this like even more full screen though that's the question Uh, also, another cool component that they were talking about that I can't show off here because this is a, a virtual machine, but um, you can actually set one, your workspaces on multiple monitors to be tiled versus on GNOME. I don't, you can't do tiling whatsoever in GNOME unless you have like a weird extension. Um, but like the the workspaces also span multiple monitors as well which gnome i don't think you can do that actually i have gnome open here let's gnome only has a like a per like a single screen workspace thing which is interesting um but yeah i mean this is uh, cosmic cosmic seems really cool it's available as an iso right now uh this is a press iso so i don't know if i can actually share the link to download this um but uh, I'm pretty excited for it. But it also sounds like Cosmic is going to be, if it already isn't available in uh, Fedora Rawhide and um, a few other community managed distributions. So I don't know, pretty exciting. I'm a huge user interface nerd. Uh, I, I spend most of my day working out like user interface and uh, user experience stuff. So having, you know, a new desktop environment on the horizon is very, very exciting to me. So if you're going to be using Cosmic or if you're excited about Cosmic, drop an orange heart in the comments below because I'd love to be able to tally real quick and just see visually 
who's all excited about it. So yeah, if you like this video, make sure you check out this one here where I talk about the uh, the latest Linux gaming news. Um, and I cover the uh, press demo that uh, System76 gave last week for Cosmic. All right, with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.